Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. This is the last of a three video series on the free, yes I did say free, for NEC2 antenna simulation program. In the first video, I presented some basics regarding the 4NEC2 antenna simulation program. In the previous video, I used these very basics to model two different antennas, a simple dipole and a simple inverted V. Well, in this video, I will move forward into a virtual experiment with a whole band 80 meter inverted V antenna. I will provide all of the design files for all of the antennas described herein as links in my description below. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified when new videos come out. So what prompted this whole experiment in the first place? Well, my own antenna is presently tuned to the voice portion of the amateur radio 80 meter band, which is 3.5 megahertz to 4 megahertz. It's also known, that portion of the band is also known as the 75 meter band. I've been thinking about taking up Morse code again. And, you know, I used to do that a lot in, in eons past. And I thought, well, it might be cool to take that up again. But that particular part of the band is a bottom end of the band, right down around 3.5 megahertz. So let's just check out my antenna and see how it operates down there, I thought to myself. And... Phew, there was my SWR somewhere in the vicinity of 10 to 1. Well, that's not going to work. And then I wonder, well, is it a problem with my antenna? Is it a, you know, where's the issue here? So I started my investigation. So I did two things. Number one, I scanned the antenna with my vector network analyzer and then saved all that data to a spreadsheet file. Then, I set up in 4NEC2 a model of the antenna to mimic the real dimensions and the environment of the current antenna. Then I ran the simulation across the entire 80 meter band from 3.5 megahertz up to 4 megahertz and then saved those results to a file. Then I stuck those two sets of data together into a single uh, spreadsheet file and plotted the results on a single uh, graph so that I could see is my antenna out of bounds of what the simulation would tell me. Well, they look almost identical. So that tells me that an inverted V antenna with an apex of 55 feet uh, tuned to a particular frequency in the upper half of the uh, 75 or 80 meter band is going to have probably a 10 to 1 SWR in that part of the band. So what were my experiments? Well, I started out, I thought, well, what about a trapped single band inverted V? That was my first one, and we'll go into that in a little bit. And the second one is, well, what about a multi-wire inverted V, kind of fashioned after the idea of a fan dipole? So let's take a look at those two different attempts and see how they came out in my virtual experiment. First, we have to kind of define what our problem is that we're trying to solve with regard to these this virtual experiment. So I took the, the simple uh, inverted V that we were uh, just looking at in the last video. As you can see here, it is the same inverted V. The only difference is, is I dropped the apex down to 55 feet where the apex of my inverted V happens to be. And you, and then I re simulated it to give me an SWR. I shifted its resonant frequency so it is dead on on 3.75 megahertz. 
And you notice how quickly the SWR goes up either side of this tuned frequency. So by the time I get to this frequency right here, uh, 3.68 megahertz, this inverted V has an SWR of 2 to 1. We get over here and we're just under 2 to 1 at 3.82 and we pop over 2 to 1 at 3.83 megahertz. So that means that this side of the and this side of the band, these two sections of the band are almost useless to me. So how to make this antenna so that I can use the one antenna over the entire 80 meter band from 3.5 to 4 megahertz. And that was the aim of this virtual experiment using for the 4NEC2 software. Well, my first try at this was a trapped single band inverted V. So a trapped single band antenna, the trap is tuned near the top of the band. The inner wire is tuned just below that frequency. The extra outer wire that extends out the end of the trap provides what's needed to tune the rest of the, for the lower end of the band. So here you can see my, my uh, version of this. The source is up here. You can see my inverted V. And these little blue guys are the traps. These traps are tuned to a frequency of 3.9 megahertz. After playing with the, the length of the, the uh, wires and all of that, uh, I, I finally got something that was within reason. And it looks kind of like this in its raw state, just as you see it here is how it looks. A lot better SWR than the original inverted V that was 10 to 1 or, or thereabouts at the bottom and, you know, way, way up here in SWR at the ends and extending like this. But, you know, I still didn't particularly care for the fact that we're still hovering around the 2 to 1 SWR across the whole band. Well, there's a solution to that one too. What if we used a matching network along with this? This is another one of the really cool things about 4NEC2. You can design a matching network or they can design it for you. So we go up here to calculate. And notice it says L pi T matching. That's what we're going to choose. And I'm going to choose a stub match. Notice that it's set for 3.75 megahertz, my design frequency. And then you have choices between a parallel stub and a series stub and so on, but we're going to use a parallel stub. Now, these lengths are in feet. So one of these numbers, this one right here, is the amount of coax between the antenna and where the stub is connected. And then these numbers depends on whether the end of the stub is shorted across or left open is the distance between this stub, the, this junction right here, and the end of the stub. And I say, well, goodness, who wants to have 61 feet of coax hanging out there? So I'm gonna try the, the uh, shorted stub here. So. 24 foot of coax between here and here, and then 18 foot of coax between here and here. So let's see what our, our SWR looks like once we decide to put this stub to tune in this center right here. This is what's going to be tuned in is 3.75. So use stub. And we do the frequency sweep. And it, it inserts the stub automatically for you into the design and recalculates. And look at that. So from 
3.55 megahertz to 3.95 megahertz. We have an SWR below 2 to 1. And even out here, it's what, 2.6 to 1, 2.4 to 1 on, the, on either end. And that's within range of your antenna tuner. So that's a possible option, putting in your traps into your antenna and using a stub match like it shows here to get an antenna with this kind of, of response. But there's another option that I think is also quite interesting, and that's what I will be addressing next. So here's the other option, kind of inspired by uh, the fan dipole, where you can have uh, several different an antennas all off of the same feed line, uh, one tuned for 3.5 megahertz, one tuned for 14 megahertz, and so on. Only this is a single band version here. What I have here is an inverted V with two sets of legs. One set of legs is tuned for the near the low end of the band. The other set of legs is tuned to the upper end of the band. And so, and they, and I discovered they have to be at right angles to one another, just like you see here. If you start bringing these in to, toward each other, they start interfering with one another. So you need to have them at right angles to one another. Now, if you look at the SWR plot, that's what it looks like. My goodness, look at that. It just barely pips over the 2 to 1 SWR at the low end of the band. Just barely pips over the 2 to 1 at the very, very top of the band. And I suppose if we move this up just a little bit, that's going to go up a little bit. But this will come down, and so you'll be able to keep the entire... 80-meter uh, band from 3.5 to 4 megahertz under 2 to 1 using this antenna. Now, at the center of the band, the antenna is absolutely omnidirectional. On the low end of the band, it's broadside, just a little bit broadside to the the inverted V that is tuned to the bottom of the band. And at the top end of the band, it tends to be just a little bit broadside to the inverted V that is tuned to the top side of the band. And so if you have the, the uh, real estate to be able to have an inverted V like this with two sets of legs, then you can cover the entire 80 meter band with one antenna. Now this is all in theory. I haven't built it yet, but I, I, I feel an antenna project coming on this summer. So there are my weird virtual experiments. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified when new videos come out. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, toodaloots.